a bad thing and hey biggie like we're that. watching harriet rosie so aren't we so many fantastic are we on that video whether mm. it's videos letting me know why you're subscribed which is really helpful like i almost felt a little bit like <laughs> try and get you to feed my ego or something but just genuinely i want to know why you guys are subscribed to me so that i can try good boy hi guys dane here and welcome to another reading vlog number six maybe i don't know um let's see okay let me start off with the books so, uh, yesterday I fin- well, after midnight, so it is this week, technically. I finished reading The Cracked Looking Glass by Catherine Ann Porter, which is Penguin Mini Modern number 37. This one was weird in that the actual plots and whatnot, they were fine. Nothing special, really, but the dialogue in it was so funny at times, like, I was properly laughing out loud, and it's pretty rare for books to do that to me. So, um, I did enjoy it, I mean, Again, it does say here, so a passionate, unfulfilled woman considers her life and her marriage in this moving novella by one of America's finest short story writers. Now, I don't care about anything to do with romance or whatever. It just bores the pants off me. However, like I say, the dialogue in it, some of the lines that the characters came out with were so good that it, I could overlook it, you know? It was probably only uh, still only a 3.5 for me, but um, yeah, it was all right. Uh, and then I'm now currently reading Fortunately the Milk by Neil Gaiman and Chris Riddell. So Chris Riddell did the illustrations of it. What's quite funny actually, let me show you. Let me find it. It does have some really good illustrations. So for example these here. So, here we go. So this is basically, here we, this is what I wanted to show you. Look at that character. The main character. Oh, it's gone more out of it. So this is the main character. And he's like a dad who's gone out to get some milk. And then he comes back and tells the kids what happened. But doesn't he actually look like Neil Gaiman as well? It's great. Now, I've said before that I have mixed feelings about Neil Gaiman. And I kind of have a love-hate relationship with him. This definitely falls on the love spectrum. I'm really enjoying this book. I mean, it is a kid's book, but it's funny as well. So, especially if you have kids, I would recommend this. But even if not, and you're just a Neil Gaiman fan... It's worth reading, to be honest. Next up, I think I'm going to read James Baldwin, Dark Days. I've never read James Baldwin before. This is just an, another short Penguin mini modern classic. Um, I'm, f I'm feeling reading shorter books at the moment because The Passage, man, it, it just... I don't know. I spent most of last week reading The Passage and didn't even finish it, and I just got so bored with it. I am still reading it. It's my bedtime book. I'm on page 650 now. I'll get there, but I mean, it just, it kind of sucked my love of reading away for a little bit. So I want to, I want to just read some short stuff that I'm going to enjoy. In terms of life updates, I got woken up today by the landlord coming around to fix our tap because it keeps, it just drips constantly and it annoys me because it's a waste of water. So he's going to send a plumber around, but I didn't know, he didn't say he was coming around. We left the message on his answer phone and then he just didn't reply to it. And so he literally knocked on the door this morning and, I, and woke me up. Like, we're not supposed to have pets here. <laughs> so normally when he comes around, I try and hide all of the biggie stuff, but I didn't have time today. But I don't think he noticed and or cared. So yeah, we'll have a plumber come around at some point to fix that, hopefully. And this evening, when Becca gets home from work, I'm going to be cooking vegan mushroom volivants. Oh, one last thing to mention. I've been invited on like a press trippy thing. Let me read you, read you the email. Dear Dane, please accept this email as your invitation to Althorpe Literary Festival taking place on Friday the 5th of October to Sunday 7th of October. We have handpicked a number of bloggers and influencers to receive our exclusive VIP package that includes two author sessions, subject to availability, coffee on arrival, a signed copy of Charles Spencer's book, To Catch a King, and a complimentary afternoon tea. So Charles Spencer is... Uh, Princess Diana's brother, basically, and he has a book. What's interesting is my mom recently went to Althorpe to uh, just, I can't remember what she went there. She went just for the day for something, and um, she said it was really good. She actually met Charles Spencer and got a photo with him and got a signed copy of his book as well. So uh, now I pretty much have to go because she said it was amazing and a really nice time. So yeah, cool. Definitely go to that. Hopefully they have got some like soy milk to go with their afternoon tea though. <laughs> anyway, I should get back to work. It's 20 past three and I have to do some work. A bit of stressful week at the moment. Lots of client stuff coming through. But yeah, anyway, see you later. All right, we have a problem here. There's this page here, look, that I think is meant to open up, but it's it's not been cut. 
So I can't, without actually tearing the page. You see what I mean? That, unless it's supposed to, I thought maybe it was meant to be, is it a poster? Oh, I see, it opens out like this. Yeah, no, I don't like that. That's gimmicky as hell. Today, I'm doing a mushroom volivant with these things. I don't want to say what they are because Becca doesn't know what he's being served with yet. But uh, I will let you know more. I need to put this inside this and then there's a lid for it. Okay, it is done. It is a beast. I did not expect it to be that much of a beast. And it will be served on these plates like this. Let's see if I can cut into this. All right, now it is two. Oh yes. Here we have the final result. Biggie. What are you doing? It's 4 a.m. Biggie. Get off my keyboard. Mmm. Bit, 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 bit. <laughs> I'm trying to lick the camera. I have just had some chip sticks. Am I zoomed in? I'm zoomed in. Why am I so zoomed in? There we go, that's better. Okay. Oh, other news. A Geek Gear box today arrived. What? I didn't say that properly. A Geek Gear box arrived today. So I guess Becca and I will be unboxing that soon. I have actually cancelled my subscription, but I guess I cancelled it after they took payment for this month's one, which is fine. We'll just unbox it. Uh, in terms of me reading, I finished reading, fortunately, The Milk by Neil Gaiman with illustrations by Chris Riddell. Thought it was really good. Four out of five for me. And... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I say that Gaiman is pretty hit and miss for me. This is probably one of my favourite books by him now. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. Worth checking out if you like kids. Then, as I was on a... Oh no, then I read... Then I read Dark Days by James Baldwin. So this is Penguin Mini Modern number 38. I'm just trying to, like, blaze through the rest of these, really. I've got 12 more left after this one. So, I've never read any James Baldwin before, and I've heard a lot of good things. It was a good read. Uh, it basically is, is kind of... It's non-fiction about how black people are getting screwed over by society, basically. And uh, I did see one of the reviewers said it's more relevant today than ever, which is probably a fair point. But um, it's not enough for me to tell you whether I like him as a writer or whatever, whether I want to read more of him. I think I probably will pick up another James Baldwin book at some point, just to, to kind of finish making up my mind on him. And for now, I'll give it like a 3.5. It was all right. Uh, it wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be, based on what I've heard about James Baldwin. Then I read The Little Horse Bus by Graham Greene. So this is a, a children's book, another new gamer one. And this is just because I'm trying to um, read every Graham Greene book, basically. So this is illustrated by Edward R. Dizone, who apparently became like quite a well-known illustrator after, after these came out. This is probably my favorite of his kids' books. Um, it's, it's about a little horse bus, a little bus pulled by a horse. I mean, it's delightfully 1960s or whatever it was written. And the only one I have left now is the little steamroller. I will give that a four out of five. It's a really charming children's book. And that brings me up to what I'm currently reading, which is Georges Simonon. I probably pronounced that wrong. Letters to my mother. Letter to my mother, sorry. And I'll read you the blurb. This says, uh, Georges Simonon's stark confessional letter to his dead mother explores the complexity of parent-child relationships and the bitterness of things left unsaid. And it is it's very touching and um, uh, kind of haunting almost. And it makes me want to tell people I'm close to that I love them. Including you guys. I love you guys. Yeah. Every day is one step closer to death. So tell people that you love them before it is too late. All right, on that note, I'm gonna go and read some more of it. All right, this bit's for the reading vlog. Becca's been watching the reading vlogs, haven't you? Yeah. You've been enjoying them? Yeah. Why, why do you watch vlogs of me when you live with me? <laughs> because there's stuff that goes on when I'm at work. Yeah. I get to see it, like with you and Biggie. Yeah. And this is the behind the scenes. We are just about to film opening our Geek Gear box. It'll be our last one. Today 
I made a mushroom and nut roast with roasted vegetables and some uh, green beans as well. It's got fennel on. And we are watching Central Intelligence, which has got the rock in it. That's not the rock. It's got Aaron Paul. Biggie's come yeah. to help me work, haven't you, Biggie? I think you're sitting on my keyboard. Ah! What's that for? Okay, the liberal arts, that academic world. Right. Push it to the limit. It just shakes off. Of course, that's how metal works, right? Just shake it off. If you're ever stuck in prison. Like Taylor Swift. So, for today's update, I've read a few more of these Penguin Mini Moderns. So, I finished Letter to My Mother by Georges Simonon, which I think I talked about before. It just made me want to tell my own mother that I love her. And uh, I will give this a 4 out of 5. Then we had William Carlos Williams, Death the Barber. And uh, I'm quite a big fan of William Carlos Williams. I've actually read his collected poems. There was w the one in this as well. This also included. There we go just found it. This included the poem of his that got me into his work in the first place, so we actually studied this poem at university, so this is called This Is Just To Say. I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox, and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet and so cold. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, William Carlos Williams, lowest stuff. This is a 4.5 for me. Uh, I would recommend picking this up, to be honest. Especially if you want to read more poetry. I just, I really like his style, is all. And then I read The Problem That Has No Name by Betty Friedan. And basically, The Problem That Has No Name is gender inequality. I'm going to read you the blurb, actually. The pioneering Betty Friedan gave voice to countless American housewives who, despite being sold a dream of the perfect home and family, silently wondered, is this all? And set the women's movement in motion. And this was really well written, actually. I, I did enjoy this one. I don't always enjoy books about feminism because I think it's... People sometimes have a, like, a tone problem and also they don't include like statistics and studies to back, you know, back their arguments. Whereas here... Hurrah! We have a notes section and some sources. So <laughs> that made me happy because I'm like, okay, that instantly adds, like, it adds something to the argument. It just adds weight to it, you know? This, this was fine. This actually, and I like the structure of it, the way that she used the problem that has no name. Random ramblings aside, did really enjoy the problem that has no name. And uh, yeah, I would give this a four out of five as well. So that was good. And now I am reading. Indisputably Doris by Charles Heathcote. So this is book two in his uh, Doris, Doris Copeland series. And it's just as funny as the first one so far. I'm really enjoying it. And um, after reading the passage, which by the way, I'm on page 700 now. Yeah, 700, page 700 on that. Uh, after that, I've just been looking for something I'm really going to enjoy. And this is it for me. This could well be one of my books of the month. So yeah, happy days. Today's dinner is fun if there be It's not how you speak, Dane. Today's dinner is finished and it is homemade chips with a side salad and the main of a portobello mushroom burger. Very nice. And we have some oil left from the chips that I'm gonna try and use to make churros. And we're watching What About Dick? So, for dessert, I made tacos with a chocolatey sauce and vegan strawberry milk. So, I was just casually watching BookTube and I turned around and saw this. What are you doing, Biggie? You're white? This little man tried to steal my keyboard, didn't you, Biggie? That's it. Oh, look, dildo. Don't look all innocent. Oh, nice. Go, go, go. Do you mind if I... Oh. Go, go, Can I have go. some of this footstool, please? Go, go, go. Is that all right? Go, go, go. What's this? Just leave me alone, please. Let's watch your PewDiePie. Probably still. I don't know. We may have been watching this in the last clip. He's fallen asleep. 
That comfy cat. Hello, it's Thursday. I'm feeling a bit, I don't know, so not right. You know when you just don't feel right? I don't know. I'm just a bit, a bit uninspired, a bit stressed, a bit, a bit bored of everything. But it's fine. I uh, have at least been reading a book that I've really been enjoying, which is Indisputably Doris by Charles Heathcote. If anything, I think this is probably more enjoyable for me than the first one. It's, it's come around at just the right point in my life, I think, when I'm just like, I just need to read a book that I'm just going to really enjoy and that's going to make me smile. This for me is like the equivalent of um, when I used to have really bad anxiety, I used to watch American Pie 2, just like watch the movie over and over again basically because I kind of knew it pretty much off by heart by that point and so it was just background noise but it was also cheerful if that makes sense and this book is like the perfect bookish equivalent of that where it's not it's not giving me the fear it's not challenging me it's not like forcing me to imagine myself in these other worlds or anything like that it's just a nice story that makes me smile so thank you Charlie and please hurry up with book number three because I need, I need that. Uh, I, I think I might actually reread these books at some point, and I very rarely reread. So yes, but um, yeah. Other than that, life is very much just continuing. So yeah. Hey, I didn't say I'd always be cheerful in these vlogs. One out of five. Eesh, they're gross. They're not it's good. Matt Zion from Reckless Eating. He's doing some food reviews. Mystery Peeps flavors. That is an excellent place to pause it. Okay, so it is Friday? It's Friday! Uh, yeah, my sense of time is gone, so I haven't been to... Bloody hell! Did you... I don't know if you saw that in the camera, because I could not see then, but the, the, the sunlight is coming in through the window, and it just shone right in my face. I actually have to when I'm working from home, so it's 8.20 a.m. at the moment, and I have to have the curtains closed until about 11 a.m. because the sun just comes straight in through the window and I can't see my computer, which is directly in front of the window. So the reason I have no grasp of time really at the moment is because I didn't sleep again. My sleeping pattern is screwed. I'm, I'm hoping to stay up till about 10 p.m. this evening and then go to sleep and then reset my sleeping pattern, but it never seems to work. I just revert to being an insomniac. I kind of want to look into getting some help for it because I think it's actually a in my life quite a lot but at the same time I mean I'm getting the right amount of sleep I'm just getting it at the wrong time and because I'm self-employed perhaps that's just it perhaps I am just a night owl who knows that's probably not what you're here for though so I am going to talk about books so I have still been reading indisputably Doris I'm right at the end of it now I am on page 230 about 255 but I think I can feel comfortable enough in rating this. It's another solid 4.5 from me. Uh, I, I did notice there are occasional like the typos and a couple of like weird little layout things, but Charlie kind of knows about them as well. I think he might even have updated them for like the latest version of the book, and uh, it didn't hamper my enjoyment of the story at all. So. Here we have Doris Copeland, she is like in her 70s I believe, uh, she's like a northern lady, northern northern English, and this is the, like her story and her husband, Harold. So in this one, there's like an election at the local women's institute. It's very hard to explain these and make them come across as, as funny as they are. They are just very, very funny. Uh, let me read you the blurb actually, because this is probably a good way of giving you what like the style of the writing is. Indisputably Doris is the second book in a series of monologues featuring Mrs. Doris Copeland of Partridge Muse, atomic housewife and owner of a rock bun recipe that can make the most secure dentures shudder. Join her once more as she battles Pandora O'Malley for her position as chairwoman of the WI. Her campaign brings her up against flu, would-be elves and a bake sale that may just be a cover for more nefarious means. Told from the perspective of her long-suffering husband, Harold, it's no wonder he spends so much time down the hare and horse. And yeah, I really enjoy these books. I would really recommend them. They've been making me very happy and I want book number three. And um, with that finished, which I will finish it soon, like I'll finish it today in an hour or two, uh, I'm going to pick up Fortune Box Stories by Madeline Swan. So this is both for Todd and Danes, Indie Read Along, and uh, these are both booktubers as well, so check out both their channels. The final thing I guess I'll mention, a couple more things, all these bits on the side here, 
We've been sorting out the cupboards because it turns out we have loads of duplicates of stuff. So basically, Becca's going to put a bunch of this. She's going to find somewhere to sort of stash it away so that we can, you know, just bring it back out when we use, for example, pizza bases. We have three packs of pizza bases and I want to make my own dough as well. And down here, I don't want to show you too much of what's here, but I'm going to be doing a video on... Uh, taking dragons out of books because we are I did one adding dragons to books and that was popular and uh, Emma Rosen from Emma Rosen books suggested s switching it around and taking dragons out of books so that should be fun I'm gonna film that in a bit other than that yeah 8 25 a.m. now and I'm just gonna continue not sleeping I need to go and register at the doctor soon so I might do that so if you see some outside bits that's probably where I'm going because I feel like I haven't been outside for like three or four days yeah, my life, man. It's I, it's not in the best place, but I'm working on it. We all are. God damn it! This is so weird. So this is like a virtual vlog. I'm originally from Wisconsin. We moved here when I was eight years old. My parents are both writers, and they just really loved the idea of raising their kids by the beach. But we still go back to Wisconsin every single year for the holidays. Beautiful. So all right, here we have a side salad. And then homemade pizza with like a cashew cheese. And uh, yeah, I made the dough myself as well. Just got to slice it now. All right, Becca's at work today. It's a Saturday. I will be doing a bit of work as well, but uh, doing, a bit of, doing a bit of breakfast here. So I'm making quesadillas, vegan quesadillas. They look very nice. Just give this a quick stir. Lovely. Perfect. I don't know if you can see that, but we've got a fire engine outside. And I've just seen people going into the guy upstairs, into his house. And I'm just really, I'm actually having really bad anxiety at the moment. Like this has sparked my anxiety off because I'm slightly worried that that maybe I should be evacuating. Maybe I should be grabbing Biggie. Maybe all of my books are about to go up in smoke. Okay, I've been in a bit of a weird mood today, so I haven't uh, filmed my update or whatever. I've actually made this den on the sofa. How good is that? Okay, so I guess I will though. I'll talk about books. So since my last update, I finished reading Indisputably Doris by Charles Heathcote and I told you that I was enjoying this. I continued to enjoy it. So yeah, it was a pretty solid four out of five for me. I enjoyed it. It was a, a cracking indie novel and uh, well, the last book, R. Doris, the first book in the series, made it into my top books of the quarter and I suspect this one will do as well. If anything, I actually thought it was better than the first one and I'm looking forward to book number three, although that's not what Charlie is currently working on. But keep writing, Charlie. Then after that, I got a little bit retro. I read Little Miss Bad by Roger Hargreaves which just took me back to my uh, my childhood. So I particularly like about it because these are the Mr. Men books. Well, this is the Little Miss books, but when you put them all back to back and you've got them all in order, you get something like this where on the spines of them, I, I always like the idea of getting a full collection, but I, I never did get around to it. My mum used to say that I was like Mr. Bump. I saw the little kid from next door today and he told me I looked like a Viking. So I'm like, yay, I will take that. All right, then I read Saul Bellow leaving the yellow house i mean is is it pronounced saul i always pronounced it soul and then better call soul came out and i was like i'm pretty sure it's meant to be soul so it rhymes because better call soul makes no sense and this could be i mean he could be called soul below or soul bellow i probably got it wrong with both of those this is about an elderly woman who is what well, it says here a stubborn hard drinking elderly woman living in a desert town finds herself with an impossible choice in this caustically funny precisely observed tale from an american prose master and the problem the problem that i'm running into now is that there just isn't enough in these penguin mini moderns for me to make a decision about an author but from what i read i did enjoy bellow's style i would be up for reading more of his stuff but this story in particular didn't massively stand out it was probably like a 3.5 out of 5 for me it was it was good wasn't great but um his writing style was very good so that's what i liked and now i am reading this really old copy of a midsummer night's dream by william shakespeare so this is this is super old it's got some notes in it used to be from bell's grammar school in colford apparently 
It's got here 12th of September, I think 1940 or something. First published 1939, reprinted 1942, 1946 and 1948. So it's cool, nice old book. And uh, yeah, I'm about halfway through it at the moment. It's not my favourite of Shakespeare's plays actually, unfortunately. But I am enjoying seeing Bottom. That doesn't, that's not weird at all. I like seeing Bottom. I do like a good Bottom. And um, yeah, it's nice to see where a lot of the references and stuff come from. But the play itself, I'm a little bit bored with it. And now I'm just kind of reading it just to finish reading it. I'm actually near the end of the play now. And then there are all the notes, which I'm going to read all the notes because sometimes... It gives me a greater like appreciation of what I've just read, you know. So that's about it really. I made my own hummus earlier. I forgot to show you and now I've... I ate it all, basically. <laughs> I had um, two things of like pita bread and toasted it and had it with my homemade hummus. Too much garlic in it, so... It said to put one clove of garlic in, and I put one clove of... Glo one clove... What, 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 what? And I put one in, but it was a massive clove. And so I think it just needs like not that much garlic basically. And oh and I have some almonds soaking in water in the kitchen because tomorrow tomorrow I'm gonna try and make almond milk, but apparently you leave the almonds to, to soak overnight before you do that. And I'm watching Reckless Eating. They are doing Is It Expired? where they take old uh, possibly expired food products and see whether they are expired. This is actually though well, probably not the best example of their video quality because this is ripped from a Twitch stream rather than a YouTube upload, but sure. salt. Oh, it smells like medicine. I have been a fan of this. Okay, so that's Peter James, crime writer. I quite like his books. I'm just showing you here. I made my own almond milk. Uh, it's a bit thicker than normal almond milk, but you know, this is my muesli. I'm sure it'll be lovely. And in my coffee, it actually looks really good. It looks like I've used like proper creamer or something. Get it. There you go. There you go. That is Clean gross. Plate. There's a little left. There's a little. Oh, look at Chris's. Look at yours. Oh god. Come on, scrape it off. Scrape it. They're eating a uh, uh, condiment sundae, so ice cream with ketchup and mustard on top of it. Yeah. All right, hello, it is Sunday. Uh, I just slept for like 11 hours last night. Maybe I can show you on my Fitbit. I slept for a long old time anyway. Let me have a look. I've been using my fitness pal as well now to uh, try and lose a bit of weight. So actually, if any of you guys are on my fitness pal and using it, let me know and we'll, we'll hook up and we can encourage each other. All right, here is my... There we go. Oops. And I've barely moved today, as you can see. Okay, so... Uh, in terms of updates. Oh, I need to talk to you about a book that uh, I forgot to mention in my last one So that is this that is Fortune Box by Madeline Swan So Madeline Swan is here on booktube as well. She's a, a British bizarro fiction writer I did enjoy this book. I spotted a few typos here and there though and one thing Let me try and show you an example. So the dialogue tags in it the dialogue tags bugged me because so, for example, here we've got OK, Giles raised a nervous hand as if fending off a tiger. Whatever she said, it's nonsense. Whereas th those are presented as one sentence, you know, and it sh whereas it should be OK, Giles said, raising a nervous hand as if fending off a tiger. Or alternatively, OK, Giles raised a nervous hand as if fending off a tiger. Like, you can't use an action like that as a dialogue tag because that doesn't describe the dialogue. So let me find another one because it's constantly throughout the book. Oh, Mary screwed up her face. It was an idea of Julie's, remember her? I recognise those, Mary pointed to the options, which weren't meals at all. I don't know, I don't know whether that was deliberate or not, but that just coming, he leapt from his bed and searched for his work clothes. So those should be, those should be, I'll show you what I mean in the actual book. Focus, focus, focus. Focus. Where even is it? Yeah, look. Just coming, he leapt from his bed. Do you see what I mean? So for the first half of reading this, that was basically all I was focusing on because it was really, really irritating me. But after about halfway through, I stopped noticing it. I don't know. I feel like that's just a little copy editing thing. I don't like I say I don't know whether it's deliberate or not, but to my eyes, it's just wrong. Um, 
But the stories themselves are pretty cool. What I liked is that there's like an overarching concept of basically these packages are getting delivered throughout the city and uh, every person who receives one, something weird happens after they get the package. I mean, if you're into like weird fiction and stuff, apart from that one issue and the, and, the, and the typos, like, and those are only two or three throughout the whole thing, and it's like the wrong it's, with, you know, without an apostrophe when it should have one and vice versa. But um, other than that, I did enjoy it, and so if it sounds like your cup of tea, I would check it out. I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, to be honest, usually with most books, those issues alone would have given it a 3 at maximum, but because I did actually like the book, you know, I then marked it up to 3.5 out of 5. So, so there we have that. And I've now finished reading A Midsummer Night's Dream, and actually, so this this is good for Madeline if she's watching. Hi, Madeline. Sorry, I mean I feel I am contractually obliged to actually say what I think about books. So, you know, but I, I you know I did like your book as well. It's just may, maybe uh, I don't know. Keep an eye on your dialogue tags maybe for the next one. But um, A Midsummer Night's Dream, I actually found really quite boring, and I, I kind of couldn't wait to finish it. So I'm giving that a three out of five. So. You know, fortune box, better than Shakespeare. I'm now reading the notes at the end, which actually I find really interesting, so I always like to read the notes. But I only have like, what? Bloody hell. I have about 70 pages left to go. So, um, more than I thought actually, 70 pages of notes. I'm only on page 120 and it had an introduction as well. <laughs> so I have about as many pages of notes as the entire play was, but um, I, I actually weirdly probably will find the notes more interesting. I I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to go and sit, see a Midsummer Night's Dream. I mean, I would, if I had the chance and someone was giving me a ticket or something, I, obviously I would go and see the play. But um, I don't know if I would go out of my way for it, especially when, for example, I read Othello last month and would quite like to see Othello. So I wouldn't put it up towards the top of my list of plays. But then I like the really like hardcore tragedies, whereas I suppose this is more of a one of his comedies is it i don't know i don't know i don't know you would have thought it would have said in the introduction wouldn't you it is midsummer night's dream a comedy according to wikipedia a midsummer night's dream is a comedy written by william shakespeare in 1595 96. <laughs> did she just go 96th <laughs> <laughs> that was really weird. Um, uh, yeah, well that just shows how good of a comedy it was because it wasn't funny or entertaining in any shape or form. So, um, I don't know, I think maybe, you know, like comedy has evolved since Shakespeare, I guess, and uh, whereas tragedy has not. So I think that's why I prefer his tragedies. I also want to get to some of historical plays like Richard III and stuff, so. But um, I'm going to pretty much leave that here. I made some almond milk earlier, which I had in my coffee, which was very nice. I also put it on my uh, muesli, and it was not as nice. So, like, when you get almond milk from the shops, it has loads of bits and bobs in it and preservers and all kinds. Like, the same as milk, really. If you get the milk you get from the shops will not be the same as the milk you would get if you milked a healthy cow. For a start, it has, like, pus and blood in it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, enjoy your cornflakes. But, um... Yeah, it was literally almonds and water whizzed together. So you can put a bit of sweetener in to make it a bit sweeter. I don't find that the sweetness wasn't a problem, but when I put it on, on my muesli, because, because it's almonds and water, the water got absorbed by the muesli. And so it didn't really, like it just looks dry. <laughs> I mean, it's damp, it's damp muesli, but there's no milk in it, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm going to head off now. I'm going to film my actual reviews of Fortune Box and Indisputably Doris for Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. So I'm going to do that. I probably will not film another update because even if I do finish a book, it will be uh, A Midsummer Night's Dream. But there might be a few more bits I'm going to make for heaters later, so there may be a few more bits of the blog, uh, of the vlog, sorry. But in the meantime, I'm going to sign off here. So. Thanks as always for watching, don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe for more videos, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye. Keep watching though, because there's going to be more of this video, I don't really know why I did the sign off then. Maybe I'll, I don't know what I'll do. Also I read a bit more of uh, the passage, I'm on page 800 now, it's got slightly better but it's still pretty dull. Stir fry for dinner today, I made the sauce myself in the blender, how exciting.
Here we go. And then we're watching The Last Kingdom, which is based on a Bernard Cornwell book. <laughs> 